Hi, in this clip I want to focus on a case study of a high cost to serve contractor um, and actually we'll stretch it to generalize it more towards the end but uh, sometimes it's just helpful to tell a story. Uh, I, I was involved in a, in a turnaround of a contractor supply business and um, one of the, the large losing customers was quote one of our best customers and it turns out that this this contractor supply distributor had grown up in a certain area of town and and right around the corner i mean really two minutes away was a was a was a commercial contractor who bought all their stuff from this this distributor and really they sort of thought this was their best customer i mean the sales were huge the margin dollars were big the margin percentage was pretty good but it turns out that long ago when when this guy the, the contractor first got into business he said you know I don't need to have any inventory. First of all, I don't have the working capital, the money to tie up in it because I'm just a startup. Secondly, the distributor's right around the corner, so let's use their inventory. And he knew in the back of his mind that if he had a lot of inventory, he was worried that there would be too much on the trucks because guys would hoard it uh, and that you know, it might disappear. These guys would steal some inventory and use it for doing moonlighting jobs. So he just thought, well, let's just do hand to mouth. And every morning he'd have all these guys coming in. His business got bigger and bigger. He's running 10, 11, 12, 14, 15 vans. And he would make sure they would come in in the morning to make sure that they were looking alert, ready to do business, give them a cup of coffee and say, all right, here are the first couple jobs you have for the day. Run down to the to the distributor's counter and get the stuff you need, and off they would go and do their jobs. And then they, you know, get a couple more jobs the, later in the day, and they come back at lunchtime, and and maybe sometimes even in the middle of the afternoon. But you might get thirty transactions in a given day, and and all these guys would wait in line, you know, at the at the counter, and they'd say, "All right, give me fifty dollars, or twenty dollars, or one hundred and forty-two dollars, and bill me, bill me, bill me, bill me." So it was creating all this paperwork costs on both sides of the fence that nobody really was measuring because every Everybody was just focused on, on the distributor side, they're focused on sales and margin and margin percent. And on the other side of the fence, they're focused on no inventory, we use the other distributor's inventory. Uh, well, when they finally you know, got around to measuring uptime economics and got around to measuring paperwork costs, they, they both, the distributor and the contractor, are like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? So they hatched a plan. And what they did is at the end of the, every day, they anticipated that the next day would come. So the contractor already had a lot of jobs built for the next day. So they had one very disciplined, good person who was in charge of figuring out exactly what would be needed for every job. And then some, sometimes they have a little extra items and they would, they would communicate. And these days they would fax it over to the distributor. Uh, now they email it uh, or enter electronically right into the distributor's, you know, uh, web order entry capability perhaps but um, in those days they they communicate to the to a, a second shift person distributor and then all those 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 orders would be picked and put in recyclable returnable basically bin boxes these little plastic you know boxes and um, first thing in the morning actually before the day began somebody for the contractor would stop by and pick up all of these boxes take them over uh, to the to the contractor's premise then when the van jocks came in they would you know say great here are tote boxes for going and doing your first two three contracts go do them so instead of going over and waiting in line for an hour and then ordering 15 items or two items or six items they thought they needed to do the job and forgot one or two so they had to go back to their van or get in their van and ride out to home depot or someplace at any any place as close as they might have the miscellaneous oversight item they had they just did more work and so their, their, uh, the, the number of hours they had as far as build hours for payroll hours went up you know, by 50%. Um, the volume, actually, the distributor did with the contractor went up by about 20% because that was the, 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 oh my gosh, go get it from anywhere you can slippage that happened during the day. The, the paperwork consolidation costs dropped dramatically, and I could go on. Now there were there were more details because they flow charted what was going on. They flow charted what could happen. They looked at the incremental costs and benefits in both sides, which were not an even match. So the contract, the distributor actually was charging more money to pre-assemble these kits and recycle the, the material from the kits that wasn't used, but it was more than offset by the benefits the contractor was getting. So it was a it was a, a truly a, a co-created solution. And that will happen, you know, that possibility happens basically when you go to look at the bottom of your uh, net profit ranking report, 
and do deep dives and look for the peculiar items, the, the picked all the time losing items, the, the emergency orders and what the small items were that were the emergency, you will find these kinds of opportunities that can, sometimes it's a one-off, but it's a general concept that you apply to turning uh, lots of frictional costs and inefficiency for both sides into found value, wealth. So it, uh, it's good. Thanks.